welcome back to my channel and welcome back to possibly the most intimidating series that I have attempted on my channel so far and the one that's going to take the biggest commitment but hopefully it's going to have the biggest payoff. This is the part one of eight or nine I think of the In The Fold Pant Sewing Skills Kit. I've been a subscriber since about last October and I haven't yet made a pattern. I know, I feel terrible. I am a terrible person. It costs me about nine pounds a month. It's about 15 Australian dollars and it's just a low enough of a price that I don't, um, it's not high enough on my agenda to cancel and the fact that you don't know what pattern is coming it's like a little dopamine hit every month oh i wonder what this one's pattern's gonna be which is why i haven't cancelled so i subbed for their trouser sewing kit that they call it pants um the skills and fit kit it's a mini course over three months and i subscribed because i got fed up of not knowing enough of about sewing and only having like piecemeal access to information everything was either on blogs or ironically youtube videos and I couldn't find anything that was really cohesive and give me what I wanted at a price point I was willing to pay. Um, so the, some of the courses I've seen, because I have looked into courses, because some of them have seen, they're just so, it's so much money. And they also require time away from home or they're like night school courses. And for me, that's just not feasible. It's not something I can attend. My husband's not here half the year. So enter in the folds and a well-timed post on social media and... I ordered it straight away, I signed up, and then I think I signed up on uh, month two out of three, so then once you remember, you can buy past uh, months at the membership price, which is 15 Australian dollars. Uh, but in true Steph fashion, I got overwhelmed immediately because there's a lot of information, it's a lot of pages of text and images, um, and I've done precisely nothing, and it's been sitting in my head since last October. I have printed off the sampler, and I got the block, the trouser blocks, printed um, in A0, and I have some fabric, but that's sort of as far as I've got. Then I was like, ah, I can't do this. I don't have the skills. So I'm just gonna go over the course. Like, if you want to, if you've been looking at this, I just wanna, or you've not heard about it, I just wanna go into it a bit more detail and just sort of read some of the bits out, because it is so detailed and it's, I don't think the website's 100% set up. I think they could market this course way more than they are. I do think there is a, a lack of good trouser fitting courses on the market right now. And for a price point that, that honestly, if you sign up and then it's only gonna cost you like 10, 20, 30, 45 Australian dollars, which is about 30 quid for me, for this amount of information, I think is amazing and it's all in one place. So let's crack on. So ever thought about sewing yourself a pair of pants and then quickly shelve the idea out of fear and doubt? You're not alone. Since launching curated by In The Fold sewing subscription, the most common question they've been asked in their community is how do I sew fan pants that fit? So they put their heads together and came up with a solution that will empower you to make pants that fit and pants you love minus the overwhelm trousers every time you type pants i mean trousers they've broken down the course into three bite-sized chunks that can be easily digested across the three issues of the pants making project series and then each issue focuses on different techniques and by the end of it you have loads more skills in your arsenal and apparently a perfect fitting pair of pants so a month one um, is issue 13 if you're looking on their website it's the pants sewing skills kit and this month one focuses on samplers which I've always been dead set against toils and samplers because I feel like it's a waste of time I just want to make the final project I rush in right at the deep end but this doesn't work for I've realized now how wrong and flawed that approach is because I'm just getting projects I'm not happy with. They say, we introduce this project by building up your confidence and empowering you to learn all the sewing skills you need to make a gorgeous pair of pants inside and out. We can take a break from worrying about fit and really focus on finish, learning to sew a welt pocket, a fly front, a shaped waistband, and a range of different pockets, to name a few. 
These samplers allow you to practice and perfect your skills without the stress of sewing an entire garment. These small examples can be stored with construction notes and used as reference to inform future makes as we progress through the three months of the course and beyond. What you'll learn throughout this project, common pocket options for pants sewing. So we have a slash pocket, a curved pocket, a welt pocket, patch pocket, patch pocket with flap, a zip fly front, a lapped zipper, a shaped waistband and belt loops. And then they also go over a few different types of seams. So you've got the overlock surge seams, bias bound seams, flat felled seams and blind hemming. So there's quite a lot just in month one, like a lot. So that really filled me with confidence, like yes, let's get cracking and then I lost my nerve. So they've made it so that you can use these samplers, the skills you're learning in these samplers will take you through to your final pair of trousers. Month two, pants fitting pattern and fit kit. Now the fit kit is a wealth of information. It is everything you need to know about getting the fit right. So we'll walk you through everything you need to know to sew a pants toil and prepare a fitting of our pants fitting pattern and jam pack fit kit. After spending time learning and practicing different skills and techniques required to sew pants, which is the issue 13, we'll move our focus on to fitting. We know the process of fitting and making toils can be overwhelming, but we firmly believe that if you are armed with the right knowledge and support of a fantastic sewing community, you'll be able to make a pair of pants that not only you love and are proud of, but that fit wonderfully, fit your wonderfully unique and beautiful body like a glove. The project details. So armed with a pants pattern, a comprehensive fit kit and check-in list, you will know exactly what you need to do to select a size, make a toil and conduct a fitting. Then we'll show you what to look for during the fitting process and how to make alterations to the pattern to achieve a better fit. What you will learn in this project, they delve into how to sew a toil, the order of fitting pants, the difference between crotch lengths and crotch depths, how to remove those pesky drag lines on the back of your pants, taking alterations from toil to pattern, essential pattern making techniques needed to adapt patterns. Through our fit kit, you'll learn all the pattern alterations you need for, fit, for pant fitting, such as adjusting crotch length or depth, sway back, full butt adjustment, baggy back slash flat butt adjustment, full thin thigh adjustment, so I need definitely full thigh adjustment Ugh, because I have bigger thighs. Thin thigh adjustment, full tummy adjustment, which I probably would need now as well actually. Uh, reshaping side seams, adjusting darth width or length, adjusting the waistband. So that alone is like so comprehensive. I can't believe how much like information is included in that. It's insane, isn't it? And then month three is your pants design kit. So I think this is where you can get like a little bit more creative, have a little bit more fun with it and put your skills into practice. So the options So the pant design kit will take you through the process of designing your ideal pair of pants. Adjust your pants block from part two to include as many or as few customizations as you desire. Pleats, pockets, leg volume, waist height, the details are all up to you. Just select the pant features you want Add to your block and follow the tutorials on your pants design kit. Skills you will learn how to use a pattern block, the process of taking a pattern block to pattern, loads of pattern making techniques that you will be able to apply to all your pattern making and pattern hacking projects in the future. So that's what I want to make. So there's a few trouser patterns I've seen on Mood and I want to know how I can adjust these patterns to fit my body. How to taper leg widths, add panel lines add volume in a number of different ways altering waist line height to suit your preferences so I like my trousers to fit right in my waist not across my belly like the fuller part of my belly covering a pants pattern to converting a pants pattern to a jeans pattern pockets pleats waistband options and altering positions so all of these different techniques are designed for their own trouser pattern their own pant pattern um, so it does encourage you to really want to have to buy all three parts of the course, which is fine because if you got this in one course, one, it would, it'd just be too much information and they'd be just giving away information at that point. So I'm hoping 
that the £30 that I spent on the course is worth it. Um, I need something to keep me motivated to slow down and really learn. Um, and learning how to make trousers and how to be better at seamstress is one of my 2023 goals. And I want to move on from basic elasticated waistbands. Um, and if this sounds like you, you rush in at the deep end, you don't read instructions properly, and you class yourself as an experienced beginner, but you've never really taken that step forward to actually upskilling, um, join me on this journey. Um, go ahead and buy the course. So if you've bought this course and haven't started it through to fear, join me. I will be, I think this is going to take me at least three months, maybe a bit longer, uh, because the sheer volume of information is a little bit overwhelming. And then trying to translate it from text into videos because um, that's the way I function most. If someone had done this as a YouTube tutorial from start to beginning, I would have paid so much more money for this. Like a video for each stage, like a once a week. Oh my God, like one of those $99 courses, take my money. Let me follow along on a YouTube tutorial. That would have been so much more helpful for me. Um, so if that's you, I'm gonna try and cover as much as possible in the next three months of this um, of this trouser fitting course. Um, my the description box has sort of my rough plan of action. At the moment, it will change subject to my life and how I'm feeling. So at first, in this today's video, we are going to do the curved pocket and the slash pocket. So really starting off really easy. And the seams will be included, the different types and how to finish the seams will be included as we go along. So I hope that is not too much information. I know I've bombarded you. Let's crack on with step one. First up, we want to make sure that we've cut out all the correct pieces. So the first pocket that we're making is the slash pocket. And first off we need is the front pant which is this here and I have it in this green fabric. So we check that off. I'm making one half of the um, pants slashed pocket and the other side curved pocket. It just saves on making the same thing. I don't need two sets. The next thing we need is the pocket fusing strip, which is right here, it's facing. And then we need the pocket facing, which is right here. And then we need the pocket bag. It's the same pattern piece for the curved pocket and the slash pocket, which we have here. The opening of a slash pocket is visible from the outside of the garment and is part of the design. The angle of slash pocket varies between garments and designs. Step one is take the pocket, pocket fusing strip and place on the wrong side of the front pant. You're gonna place it here. You see that lines up nicely. And then you're gonna go ahead and press that from the fabric side with a warm iron. Being careful not to stretch this because the pocket is cut on the bias. Um, attaching the fusing will prevent the edge from stretching. So go ahead and give that a good press. That is nice and fused, as you can see. Reduce a little bit of the stretch. I use quite a thin interfacing, but you can use something a bit thicker. It'll just reduce the stretch a bit more. So step two, with the right sides together, pin the pocket facing to the front pant, being careful not to stretch the pocket opening edge, as this edge is also cut on the bias. And we're gonna stitch that with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So this is the pocket facing, which is this piece here. So I've used fabric that's the same on both sides. And you should see that it nicely lines up. So I'm going to use some pins here, some clips even. You can go ahead and use pins. Now we're going to sew up this line by one centimetre, just here. Now, there's my 
three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And that's all sewn down nicely. To minimize bulk, we're gonna trim, trim the back seam allowance on the pocket facing, so on this, and this darker green, to six mil or a quarter of an inch. Hopefully yours is coming out a wee bit neater than mine. <laughs> oh god, that's appalling. Step three, we're going to flip the pocket facing to the right side. So we're going to flip this up like this. So we're now we're going to just nice and finger press along this seam. And now we're going to understitch. So we have to make sure that that seam is still pointing upwards in the same direction as the pocket facing. Now you're going to stitch right along here, so right on this darker green, really close to this edge. So now you have a nice lovely line of top stitching all the way up here on the darker green side. Now moving on to step four. With the front pant and pocket pacing to the right sides up, pin the pocket bag, which piece number four, to the pocket facing right sides together stitch the bottom edge with a one centimeter three eighths inch seam allowance before finish the seam with your chosen method consider overlocking slash so surging or bias binding so get your piece match them up This time I'm going to use pins and we are going to stitch all the way from here, all the way around to here. So I'm just going to put my two pins in, the start and the finish. And then go ahead and stitch with your one centimeter seam allowance. So we've stitched all the way around. Now I'm going to go ahead and overlock this seam to make it nice and secure. That is what that ends up finishing like. So you've got your liner stitches there and then your overlock. Because the pocket gets a lot of use, you think how heavy phones are nowadays. Just rent the pocket bag and pocket facing from moving around while you're constructing the pants. Pin through the pants of the pocket where there are multiple layers of fabric. Stay stitch one six millimetres away from the edge. So. We're just going to flip I'm going to flip this round so it actually starts looking like a pocket. So from the front. Line up your It nicely along the edges so we are going to put pins in along here and this is where you're going to stay stitched there and stay stitch down here Just use a long stitch length and then sew one quarter of an inch from there to there, there to there. Have it one slash pocket. And it's a really nice, a big pocket. So that stitching just keeps the pocket in place. So that's what it looks like from behind. Careful when you iron if you're using poly, anything poly cotton so it doesn't melt. You've got your nice clean seams there. And now we're going to move on to the curved pocket. Now we are moving on to the curved pocket. And for this you need the curved pocket bag. Which is this piece here. The curved pocket. Which is this piece here. And your front pant. Which is this piece here. Step one, pin the pocket facing 
and the front pant with right sides together and you're going to stitch with a one centimeter seam allowance or three eighths of an inch so you're going to stitch just this curve here so we'll stick some pins in that has now been stitched the next step is to grade the seam allowance and clip around the curve so what that means is you're cutting back the seam allowance to about one quarter between one quarter and one eighth of an inch i'm just going to use my rotary cutters because it's easier as you can see it's not perfect and then get some small scissors and you're just going to clip all the way around here i'm going to do it this way now be careful not to clip into your stitches so step three is pressing the seam allowance towards the pocket facing so flip the pocket back out like we did before and then give it a nice press as you can see you think oh it's all gone a bit weird and bunchy but it does come together i promise so you got the seam pressing upwards you're now going to again under stitch so you're going to stitch along the dark green bit here right close to the edge and just take your time moving along easing the fabric out of the way as you go so that is under stitched so i just want to show you possibly probably a wee bit too far away probably could have gone a little bit closer so there it's very close it seems a lot better so just be mindful but we all make mistakes that's why i'm doing this of course we are now going to move on to step four we're going to press the pocket face into the inside of the pocket front see it sits really nicely with that under stitching now you can go ahead and just give this a quick press on the iron just to help it sit nice and flat but the next step is step five the right with the right sides together pin the pocket bag which is this other bit to the pocket bag facing stitch the bottom edge with a one centimeter seam allowance before finishing the seam with your chosen method consider overlocking which is what I'm going to do here or you can use bias binding now I probably should do the bias binding method because I've not tried that but it's not something I'm possibly ever going to use in my daily sewing for trousers I'll always gravitate towards using the serger so you're going to sew this curve here all the way along just these two bits together so that's my curve finished off so we open it up so before you go ahead and stay stitch these two seams here these two sides to just keep the pocket in place you might want to go ahead and add some detailing to the pocket so definitely go ahead and press this and you can and add top stitching along the edge uh, it's often used in sewing jeans so so one line at three mil so one eighth of an inch on the edge and then the next row a quarter inch on that so six mil away from the first row of stitching so i might go ahead and just try that out and see if it works and then i will go ahead and stay stitch these two sides and voila we are finished with our curved pocket so this pocket is really really easy and quick to do and then we are moving on to slides and zips and stuff like that so I'll show you it's a nice nice deep pocket we did go ahead and add the stitching not very good because i'm not very good at showing curves but we're here to practice 
I think it would look good in like maybe a different colour, so it'd be more vibrant, more contrasting. So there's our curved pocket, and then there's our slash pocket. I don't know which one I prefer. I think I prefer the slash pocket. And then again, you can add some top stitching along there. Thank you for watching, and join me for the next video where we continue to work on our samplers. I hope this has helped, or it's all very simple so at this stage. I hope this has helped anyone who's bought this course or think about buying this course to actually start it. See you next time.